There are three things I'd like to discuss. One is about um, the principles um, that Paul has uh, shared, and also the IANA plan, um, the suggested approach of a way forward in, in terms of um, how we actually implement it, which is being uh, put on the IANA plan uh, mailing list. And let's see how we actually think about this. And then the last uh, point about the IPR is about the timing of uh, implementation, which um, we had um, started discussions at the last call, and there are continued discussions on the mailing list. Um, so we want to um, actually try to see the, the direction that everybody feels comfortable about this. Um, and um, I'm actually not um, seeing the, um, the actual agenda. So I'm trying to see this from um, out of my memory. Um, uh, let's, actually, let's try to see what I sent. Um, can you just give me a little bit more time to um, confirm the agenda? Or would, um, would someone be able to post the agenda on the, on the chat or like on the screen? Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we've covered the IPR, and then um, another point is the general implementation plan. So that's to confirm the stages of what needs to be implemented and anything that needs follow up. Um, and then, of course, what to um, prepare for ICANN 54 meeting. Uh, so in addition to um, any of the public uh, meetings that we want to. Um, be prepared. Um, it might be nice to have like an opportunity to um, meet up face-to-face uh, -face for those Chris team members who are there physically. Um, and then confirm the date and time of the next meeting. Anything else that people like, would like to suggest as the um, agenda? Um, I see no comments or hands. Um, so, Let's um, go first to confirming the action items. So minutes from the last call. Um, Loriana, would you like to, um, would you be able to help us confirm the status? Yes, we've been, we've been trying to catch up with the missing notes and we've updated several of the notes on the website. You can check out, we have the May, July and August minutes set up and we're working on a few minutes which are still missing from June and August and the past meeting. So they, they will be absolutely ready before next meeting. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think that's uh, consistent with my understanding as well. And I see all the recordings are posted so in case any of the members actually have missed the, um, the meeting uh, they can still confirm their recordings. Uh, but. It's, of course, a very good to have the, the notes available as well. So uh, let's now go to um, the question from the, the question from the ICG. So there were two questions from the ICG. Uh, one is a question on whether uh, the number community is willing to coordinate with um, other operational communities in case of uh, changing the IANA function operator. Uh, and then the second question is um, whether the numbers community is, uh, would like to participate in the CSD and the, the, um, the IT function review process, um, whether this is uh, for um, any of the um, issues in general, um, focusing on names, or whether um, this is just uh, restricted to uh, in other ARPA and IP6R.ARPA. Uh, so on the first, uh, you've, you probably have all seen the, um, the draft comments that uh, um, Nurani and I have drafted and shared on the global list. Uh, so on the first comment, uh, well, the short answer is yes, we're willing to coordinate. And this was actually uh, expressed in um, the number community proposal that uh, we are willing to uh, coordinate with the other communities um, on this point. 
So just basically quoting. Um, and then again on the second response as well, this is again our quoting from um, the first team, um, the, the number resources proposal. Uh, and the short um, conclusion is that to, no, we, we we are not we don't see any need to um, to participate in CSD, no IANA function review um, review team. And the reason is that uh, we are actually, um, according to understanding, this is very much focused on the names related uh, issues, and then on the uh, in other APA and IP6 APA. Those are the area that is outside the NTIA contract. This is there's already existing uh, uh, arrangements and collaboration between the IETF and the RIR communities, uh, and we consider this out of scope, uh, out of scope of the names related function. So we we consider this uh, out of scope of the CSC and uh, the ANA function review team. So that's the core of the response that um, we have actually shared on the global list. And um, so there will be an um, ICG meeting, which is coming up in, I think, uh, six, seven hours from now. And in case any of you see additional points that needs to be added to our response, this is the time to uh, share. And then we need to follow up with the ICG as soon as possible so that they're able to consider this uh, any changes before they're called. On the run. Thank you, Zumi, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I am, uh, well, we, I drafted that response, so I don't have much to add to, to that. But uh, one thing that did, uh, that was a little bit unclear to me was the amount of detail that the ICG uh, wanted. Uh, of course, we are, as, as we wrote, we had already identified the need to to, for coordination between the communities and uh, express that we're committed uh, to do that coordination. Um, but it was not clear to me in the in the ICG question how much um, detail they wanted about what type of coordination might be needed uh, or if there are new uh, mechanisms that we should uh, uh, we should detail. Um, I do find it a little bit premature perhaps to to try to identify any such coordination mechanisms because that would have to be done in, in cooperation with the other communities. But one thing that did strike me was that uh, maybe um, the NROEC um, would have details that they would like to, to add. Um, so it's just, um, just an additional question there. But Maybe the best way to proceed is to wait the ITG uh, meeting, and hopefully uh, Paul Wilson and Alan uh, Barrett will be part of that. Uh, and if the ITG wants more details, um, then maybe they can pick that up, and we can they or and or we can ask the the RIRs um, to add any more sort of uh, specific details on on coordination or processes that the structures that they feel uh, need to be put in place. I think it's more of an RIR issue, uh, question chance than, than uh, for us. Thanks. Thanks, Narani. I completely agree. Um, so any other uh, comments around this? Andre. Thank you, Norani, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, for what it's uh, worth, um, I think the IETF IANA plan are converging on a response that no uh, formal mechanism actually necessary. There are plenty of informal communication happening. Well, thank you for that. Um, uh, so, no, no formal mechanisms are necessary, and informal mechanisms worked uh, quite well. Um, so, we have a good track of uh, record in in this space. Um, so, just just a piece of information. Thank you, Andre. Um, so, I think that might 
also serve as a good um, reference in um, considering on um, any way forward. And indeed, I think um, we we have been coordinating in the areas that are necessary um, in this, um, up to now on the owner function. So it, I think it might be something that's worth uh, further consideration if this. Uh, you know, we can continue with this um, current situation, or and then we take this IETF approach as a reference, or we actually see something a little bit um, different from uh, from the numbers perspective. So, as uh, Nurani has suggested, I, I think it would be good to wait for the ICG to see if they have um, any uh, follow up and feel the need for further detail. Uh, let's wait for their response. And again, this is the area that would be for the RIRs to um, work out and confirm. So I think we need to coordinate with the RIRs on this in case we need, uh, we receive um, a request for further detail. So um, I, I, at this stage, I'm not um, seeing any um, suggestion to um, add um, add or make changes to the ICG at this stage. So um, let's see, let's like uh, finally make a, um, com let's confirm once again if people, anybody feels that there needs to be changes to um, the response that, um, that's been shared on the global list. If not, then we'll uh, fix uh, we'll formally um, consider this response as fixed and then have the ICG review our response. Okay, uh, so thanks everyone for this feedback and then let's go to the IPR. So, um, so Paul has shared the principles and I think um, there are a few feedback for this uh, principle. Um, Generally, uh, people felt that these principles were good, and I made a suggestion that um, I made one suggestion that we might want to be clear that um, the holder of the IPR has expertise on the intellectual property rights. Um, I think Nurani has uh, responded that this may be already covered uh, in in saying that. Um, this holder of the IPR has competence. Um, um, before going to the details, let's like so that's a, that's a point that needs to be discussed. And then um, another point is a suggestion from Andre that uh, this needs this implementation needs to be completed before the transition, which is related to uh, 4C implementation time. Um, so let's see if people first have any general comments about the principles uh, and then um, move on to this, these two um, points that have been um, raised on the Christie mailing list. Okay, so uh, I'm not seeing any hands for general um, uh, comments on the principle, so I assume this is a sign that people were happy with this. And then, um, so first, I would like to ask um, if people feel we we want to be uh, explicit that this holder of the IP um, the the IPR has expertise on the intellectual property rights, or um, do we actually feel that? Um, competence um, actually pretty much covers it. Or well, people have no much uh, preference. Andre. Well, I think it's rewarding. I think uh, it's, it's important to understand our position um, well, the, the, the substantive position with regards to that issue, I think if what we are trying to imply that the uh, existing organization with a good track record uh, is our preference, then I think that's important to explicitly mention. If 
uh, we can live with a newly created independent uh, organization, um, then I think, well, general competence and how it's phrased now is uh, sufficient. Okay. Uh, Michael? Yes, I, um, hello everybody. I just have to agree. I think that um, the competence is, you know, with the principles that we have as written, I think it's, it covers what we need it to cover. I think that um, when we get to the process of actually finalizing who the holder of the IPR is, um, I think it would be very hard for anyone to take that role that wasn't competent because I think we wouldn't be um, approving of it. So. Uh, and, and the other the other people as well. So I think that um, as it's written, it seems fine to me. Um, I don't know how much more we really need to add, but just a couple of thoughts on that. That's it. Okay, thanks. So it seems that people are happy with the current wording competence. Uh, so that would be including uh, the expertise on the intellectual property rights. Um, and on Andre's point, um, whether we want the um, to be explicit about being an existing organization or uh, it doesn't matter as long as um, the organization has uh, enough competence. Are uh, there opinions about this? So current um, draft doesn't specify. So if people have no objections, that, that actually we will be open to the option of a uh, new organization as well. Do people have objections about, um, okay, um, Nurani? Um, well, I'm sorry, I might have misunderstood the question, but, but to me, there are separate things. One is to, to have, um, and obviously we want it to be a competent organization. The other is the proven track record. Uh, and I think um, that part is, um, I think addresses uh, what you were after, that we we want to make sure that it is an organization that has the experience and, and a track record in, in doing this, as well as, of course, the confidence and the trust from the community. Um, I, um, I added, when trying to sort of um, address your uh, question there, I also added something about um, serving the public interest, which which um, I think would be a, a, um, a nice, a nice uh, principle to, to add. But, um, but I'd be happy to hear what others uh, think about that. Thanks. Thanks, Narani. So um, what, uh, how do people feel about this? So there are two points. One is to... Um, be explicit about um, having proven track records. And the second uh, point is about adding um, um, public interest. Michael. Yes, hello again. Um, so the public interest side I don't think is, is a problem. I think that that's, uh, that would be a, a nice addition on there. And I think that making sure that there's competence is, is added um, or at least some reference to that, that that's okay too, I think. But um, the only thing with a proven track record, I mean, personally, I think that it is good if somebody has a track record for um, that we can refer to. However, given the kind of back and forth on this, and we're not sure how the, um, what the ultimate uh, solution is going to be, that if we put something in there about proven track record, if that will restrict the identity of whoever we are um, ultimately going to choose. So I don't know if that's kind of a, a limitation that we want to include in there because there could be negotiations back and forth about maybe a new entity being set up, but then it's comprised of certain certain elements that do have track records. Just wanted to just wanted to point that out in case it might be a limiting factor. Oh, and um, and Bill Woodcock's actually here with us too in the conference room as well. Just wanted to let you all know. Oh, great! Thanks, hi, Bill. And thanks to um, Erin Folk for um, joining from Montreal um, during the meeting. Um, so what do people think about this uh, point um, about proven track records? 
So there could be a possibility of limiting the options, uh, but do we, oh, we might also want to have like uh, make sure that uh, this organization has comfort, uh, competence. Um, so it's it's a, a it's a balance of these two factors. Um, do people have a preference over the other? So Michael has uh, was raising a point that it might be good to keep this option open, and um, so it might be good not to mention it. But uh, is, does anyone have any other comments? Andre? Well, I think this document simply summarizes the CRISP uh, uh, proposal, right? It doesn't add uh, uh, any substantive uh, new items because that would be simply wrong. Um, I think what we can do, and which is in fact in the proposal itself, is to actually mention IETF Trust as an entity that we think um, fulfills those requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, are you suggesting that so we will actually not necessarily mention about um, the proven track records? But we mentioned that the IETF Trust is the entity that uh, meets our requirements. Is that what you're say, uh, suggesting? I'm trying to understand um, your point. Yes, I think what we're discussing is whether we want to uh, somehow narrow the requirements that um, while well, the selection process will be better scoped, right? Because I think no one is looking for a full flash, you know, uh, RFP process and uh, all this stuff, right? Uh, there are only so many kind of possible candidates and possible alternatives. Uh, one way of limiting the scope would be just to provide a reference to an existing organization. And what I, I was suggesting is purely take the text from the proposal itself, right, without second-guessing community choices, and put it as a remark in this uh, document. Okay, yeah. Um... So uh, we can actually reference um, what we have actually already described uh, in the number community proposal, which actually um, include this mention about the IETF Trust and um, add observation that um, the IETF Trust does meet um, the, these uh, principles that we have identified. Um, any other comments? Running. Thank you, and, and I'm not sure if I will uh, add any wisdom here, but but um, I guess we the idea with the document was to to state our principles and to try to clarify the position of the the numbers community to to make these other discussions with the other communities easier. Um, I so we we want to sort of be clearer or try to sort of be a bit more descriptive maybe than than uh, we are in the in the actual proposal, uh, which is why we are adding these sort of all these adjectives um, in in this document. Um, in some ways, I quite like Andre's suggestion of at least mentioning the ITF trust because. It is, after all, in our proposal. So, and there was a reason we put the IETF trust there, and we've discussed this many, many times. Um, I think if we add it, we should do it in the same language. Um, but we want to make sure that the document itself sort of adds enough uh, clarity um, to the other communities and like, about why we put this text about the ICF Trust in there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if that was helpful, but I'm trying to, to um, I guess I'm trying to say that I agree that it, it makes sense to have the ICF Trust in there, but we want to make sure that it says more than just our proposal, because otherwise there's really no point in having an additional document. Uh, and I quite like what, what Paul has put in this document. Um, so yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I heard you, Nirani, and uh, my 
understanding of Andrew's suggestion was not to um, abolish um, Paul's um, draft principles, but then just um, add this part about the um, the IETF trust, uh, which is in the proposal. I, I may have misheard you, Andre, um, but so that was actually um, my understanding, which it seems to be uh, what you're uh, suggesting, Narani. Um, I'd like to see if people are comfortable with this. Um, to so just as a recap, uh, so we'll keep um, the principles that's being um, drafted by Paul um, as it is, uh, and then and then we actually um, quote from the proposal about um, the IETF trust. Um, so this will be an addition. So, so Michael has um, mentioned that it makes sense to uh, restate piece of the proposal uh, that is relevant, uh, but not necessarily uh, any additions. And I see um, several people supporting this. Oh, sorry. Uh, so Paul, you have raised hand. Uh, hi there, everyone. Hi, Jimmy. Thank you. Uh, yes, basically, I was going to say what, what Michael did. So my hand doesn't really have to go up anymore, but I gave a plus one to Michael there. Um, look, I mean, let's not beat around the bush. We put it in our proposal. Now we've got this this piece here. We might as well state it again. I mean, for 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 clarity reasons, because if I think I think if we don't state it, uh, people will be looking around saying, well, what kind of organization are they talking about? Um, we know the organization we we think is is set for this. Uh, we might as well just say it, say it, and stick to it, and put it in the principles. I think it's, it's. I agree with Michael the way the way we bring it forward. I agree with Andre to bring it forward, and I agree with Michael in the way that we are going to bring it forward. Thank you. Excellent. So it seems that we are all in agreement, and um, so we're good with um, with the suggested uh, text from um, Paul, and then we just. Um, quote any part from the proposal about the IHF trust. This is Bill. Oh, hang from Bill, okay? Uh, just really quickly, uh, Andre, I believe, had used the word an, as in an example. And when you were summarizing, uh, you said that this was uh, the organization. So I think we want to be clear which we are saying, whether this is an example of an organization that meets the uh, meets our expectations, and it could be one of many possible such, or whether it is the organization that we are recommending. Okay, thanks for this question, Bill. Um, my understanding is that it's a um, so it's it's one of the organizations that we observe for itself meeting the criteria. So thanks, Nirani, for this uh, quote. So I think this would confirm that it's an accept acceptable candidate. Um, I hope that uh, clarifies it. And um, that it, it's, we, uh, we don't mean IETF trust being the only organization. It's an acceptable candidate. Um, so we can actually um, add the exact part from the text to make sure that we don't have um, any misunderstanding. So uh, thanks for this uh, question, Bill, and a very good question indeed, um, as Paul has mentioned. Um, so uh, if we're good with this uh, way forward on the IPR principles, um, we can share this with the um, global eye analyst. And uh, we probably also want to start coordinating with other operational communities. So perhaps um, we can suggest uh, a face-to-face -face meeting opportunity. Um, I actually suggested this in this uh, joint call, um, which discussed about the timelines. And ICANN Secretariat has agreed to coordinate the call with the chairs of the other operational communities. Um, so we can actually put this on the table and then share this as this draft. Um, 
possibly we can share this uh, in advance online and then um, have this discussion face-to-face -face in Dublin. Does that sound like a good way forward? Any other comments? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. Um, and uh, so uh, let's then move to um, the, the suggested approach being shared in the IANA plan mailing list of the IETF. So um, they are actually sharing a specific idea for a way forward in the implementation. And their approach is that um, to have exchange um, contract between the IETF trust and the operational communities uh, so that um, we, we actually are comfortable with how the IHS trust uh, manages these, these, um, the intellectual property rights. And also, um, for between the, an agreement between ICANN and the IHS trust on how they will transition the ownership of the intellectual property rights. So that's the basic um, idea uh, behind it. And uh, let's see if we feel this would be consistent with the principle, the I, um, IPR principles that um, has been circulated. Um, and it would be good to share our observation on the INA plan uh, mailing list um, about this uh, approach being discussed in the IETF Trust. Um, so first, do you see any inconsistencies uh, with the, um, the IPR principles about this suggested approach? Um, it seems people are quiet. Um, so do people think that this is consistent or do we actually feel that you would like to have more time to take a look? Um, and then perhaps continue discussions online. So um, thank you, Andre, for explicitly stating that you observe no inconsistencies, uh, again, from Nurani. Um, yes, indeed, Andre, that we need to ensure that um, the agreement meets the requirements. Yes, I think... Um, Hi, from Nurani. Just very quick comments from me, and I, I completely agree with Andre. And I don't uh, see any inconsistency. It'd be good if you haven't had the chance to read it to, to do so. Uh, and I also think it makes uh, complete sense to uh, to try to sort of move forward and, and clarify um, these details. I really appreciate actually that the IETF has uh, or the IANA plan has has moved a little bit on this issue. Uh, so I, I, I would be happy to, um, if everyone has a look at it and if we're in agreement, to, to try to move forward. And I think that's also helpful to the process. Thanks. Yes, thanks, Nuani, indeed. So maybe we give it um, the first team members, including the people who are not at this call, um, until the end of this week. And then, uh, if I observe no objections, we can actually express that um, we, we can share this IPR principle, and then we can actually say that we observe um, no inconsistencies uh, in the framework of the approach, and of course, uh, in moving for in considering to move forward, we would like to um, you know see that the actual agreement text also meet the requirements. But I guess at this stage, we simply um, express um, that we have definite inconsistencies for the framework itself. Uh, so I'll make a suggestion on the Christie mailing list and see if people observe any objections or concerns. And we'll um, continue these discussions until the end of this week. Then uh, let's move to um, the last point on the IPR, which is about the implementation time. So we've had a bit of uh, discussion since the last Christine call that um, 
um, well, initially, um, an observation was that um, we don't necessarily think that it's a must to complete all the implementation um, before the transition. But there are other opinions being expressed that um, it's very important that um, we actually complete the implementation on the IPR before the transition. Um, so perhaps um, either Andre or Muandua um, express why you feel that this um, it's important to ensure implementation is um, will be completed and uh, we can hear the feedback from the others. So uh, would either Andre or Muendua uh, be able to share your views? Thanks, Andre. So my point was that um, actually the whole IPR issue is one essential component of the whole accountability solution that the proposal suggests. Uh, so my feeling was that um, because that's such an essential component, it has to be um, implemented, accomplished before the transition. Another danger is that uh, we all know that once transition happens, there will be very little appetite and energy to continue adding new things. So the, the energy level will drop significantly, which will most probably result that IPR will stay with ICANN in perpetuity. So I think there is a big risk of that, and that endangers the whole proposal from the uh, numbers community. Therefore, I think it's very important that we complete these items before tr transition happens. Thanks, Andre. Um, does Muendua add anything to um, Andre's point? If not, let's see if um, Anybody have any other um, comments on this point? Okay, um, thanks, Muendua, to confirm nothing to add. And, um, well, I suppose um, at this stage, as we have uh, discussed at the last call, the options, um, at least um, the question from the ICG, was whether we want um, this to be completed um, before the submission of the proposal to the NTIA, or um, we want this to be completed before the expiration of the, the contract. So, um, and there was no option about um, leaving this uh, post-transition. Um, so given this situation, um, if there are no other concerns or comments expressed, maybe we can actually um, go for this um, option of um, trying to complete this uh, before the transition, rather than just adding a new option ourselves on um, doing this uh, post-transition. Any other comments about this uh, approach, especially if you feel any concerns? So I see agreement from Nirani. And um, I see no other comments. So, okay, so we'll, act we'll actually um, try to move forward in uh, targeting to complete this uh, implementation before the transition. So thanks everyone for this uh, feedback. And uh, then let's, uh, we have a uh, little more than 15 minutes left. Uh, so I'd like to confirm the status of the general implementation plan. So what I understand is um, first on the SLA and then on the review committee. So on the um, SLA, uh, we have the, I think we already have um, completed the second public comment. And I'm not sure if um, um, negotiation with uh, ICANN started. I'm not clear about the status. And um, if um, anybody from the RIR is, um, is possible to share this, uh, it would be good. Um, is 
do you, is anyone able to share the status on the SLA? Uh, hi, uh, Izumi, Paul here. Hi. Yeah, there's not um, there's not um, much to report at the moment on the SLA. We have um, the main inputs that we have come from ICANN, uh, from IR staff, and we are preparing to uh, speak with them in Dublin and to come up with or to understand a set of uh, possible changes which would then be published as a third uh, version of the SLA for a public review and comment after Dublin. That's about all that, um, that uh, we have at the moment. Thank you uh, for this uh, update, uh, Paul. Um, and uh, thank you also, Michael, for um, sharing uh, this situation on, on the um, chat that negotiation with ICANN has not uh, not been formally started. So uh, thank you for this. And um, um, okay, so. Um, I suppose like usually uh, for like uh, joining the discussions, it's usually um, the Chris team members who actually, um, uh, you know, provide feedback. And I, I think um, this time Paul has uh, actually offered to share this status because this question was asked about the, the RIR status. So I see a hand from um, Nurani. Yes, sorry, and, and I was, um, and I certainly don't mean to to uh, be rude in any way. Uh, I just think we need to be a little bit careful about non-Chris team members uh, commenting, and I really appreciate your comments, uh, Paul. But maybe we should actually strike those comments from the minutes. I'm just a little bit concerned that uh, it opens, uh, it sets a precedence to other observers to, to uh, participate in the Chris team uh, conferences. Are we happy to have everyone, anyone on board to, to listen? Uh, I think we need to be a little bit careful about uh, uh, sticking to, to the, uh, uh, the procedures that we have set. Apologies, Paul. Yes, um, noted, uh, Nurani. And um, yes, I think the way that uh, I asked wasn't uh, very clear and, um, you know, I said RIR people and I suppose Paul was uh, being helpful in trying to share the status. But at the same time, um, I agree with, uh, with your point. So I think it's more on the side of like my question, not being uh, very clear. And uh, we, we want to um, make sure that we actually um, have the Christine members uh, speak at this call. So, um, yes, unless on agenda as the guest speaker. Yes, I, I totally agree, um, uh, Paul, that you were uh, trying to be helpful. And I think this was more like uh, the question that I asked that, you know, I didn't ask, oh, the Christine members from the RIR. So, um, so um, and thank you, um, Nirani, also for raising this point. Um, and uh, let's uh, then um, confirm about the status of the review committee. Uh, and um, so I understand that, um, that um, the review committee charter has, uh, has already been uh, circulated. And then uh, some of the RAR communities have started calling for um, comments of the, Christine, uh, the, the review committee members. Um, at least uh, in the right MTC. Let's see the status in um, other regions. So can we start from Aaron? Oh, oh I see a hand from uh, Paul Randick. Um. Yeah, Izumi, I was just sorry. If we were, if Narani was calling to strike that from, from the agenda. I, I don't know if that will be done or not or, or what have you, but I think Michael has commented that formally these discussions have not happened. 
Um, I can comment from the side of the RIPE NCC. We're expecting these uh, negotiations pretty much only to begin at the ICANN meeting or f directly following that. So that's that's where we're at now. And no, we haven't started those discussions. That's that's probably a formal answer for you there. Thank you, uh, Paul, for this uh, update. Um, what's the status um, in Erin? Would anybody, uh, any of the team members from Erin, be able to help um, to share? Yeah. Hi, this is John. Um, Bill and Michael are both sitting here with me in this conference room here in Montreal. Um, there hasn't been uh, any activity on the list other than me. Uh, some of the, you know, the posts that have gone to the uh, global list. Um, I do have um, some questions that were sent to me from Jace, Jason Schiller yesterday that I plan to share with our uh, on our crisp list later today. Uh, so we can provide him some answers to those. Uh, it's basically to do with the um, SLA and how it's, you know, what the mechanism is for being enforced. And uh, so I'll just send this on to the list and get some input. And maybe I'll even just suggest Jason send it to the global list to get his answers. But um, that's about that's about all the activity that's been going on here. I mean, there's. Actually, an update on the CR. Yeah, Bill's going to give so, an update too. Uh, so I think um, the, the the big thing of interest here is that the U.S. government is now operating under a continuing resolution, which means that since they failed to arrive at a budget, uh, they have a sort of a bridge or interim measure that allows them to continue operating. And because they needed to do that quickly, uh, this is as of last week. Um, there was not room in there for anything contentious, and so that budget essentially is very stripped down relative to the budget we were operating under uh, previously, and so it does not include the prohibition on NTIA uh, using staff time to uh, work on this. So as of uh, last week, NTIA is reengaged and is actually able to consider proposals. So until November 11, there is a window of time in which uh, NTIA could actually act on something if we were able to give them something actionable. November 11 would be their deadline for handing it to Congress uh, for approval. So whereas two weeks ago, there was no chance of any of this actually coming to anything uh, without having to restart from scratch two and a half years from now. Um, now we do have a brief window uh, in which all of this work could come to fruitful conclusion if we move extraordinarily quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for this um, update. Um, um, uh, that's uh, interesting to hear the situation of the US government and also thank you, for John, for this um, update of the situation from Aaron. And it certainly would be good to um, hear um, Jason's comment either through you, John, or directly through the globalist. Um, uh, thank you. And uh, let's see if um, anybody have any, um, any of the regions have um, updates on the selection of the review committee. And uh, so if people have started the, the selection process, it would be good um, if um, you can raise hands uh, and share the situation. If not, I think um, if no, no, none of the RIRs of the regions have started, um, um, except for the right region, which have started discussions about um, how to do the selection, uh, it would be good to um, maybe follow up with um, the respective RIRs. Um, each of the RIR uh, representatives here would be good to go back and follow up with um, your organization to see if we can actually start the selection process uh, within our region. Um, because I think it would be good to have confirmation on who the exact members will be before the completion of the transition. Um, and so I think that's uh, that, those are the two points that I wanted to confirm around the um, the general um, implementation. But are there any other stages that uh, we'd like to confirm around the implementation at this call?
Okay, I'm not uh, seeing any hands. So then uh, let's um, consider if any other action preparation needed for um, ICANN 54 meeting. Um, I understand um, Nurani has actually reached out to the ASOAC to see if there's an opportunity to give a, a presentation um, about the status of the um, the number community uh, on the island tran um, stewardship transition. Um, Nurani, would you be able to share if we have the slot or not? Yes, thank you, Zumi. Um, I've um, logged out and joined by uh, the mobile, so that's uh, what you see on there. Um, it appears that there will not be an ASOC um, session at the next ICANN meeting. Uh, there was a mis I'm not sure if there was a misunderstanding, but um, apparently there will be no such slot. It is still in the agenda, but I guess that's waiting to be updated. So at the moment, we do not have a... An, a presentation because we do not have a session. Um, so that is, yeah, that's all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nurani. And uh, I see hand from Paul. And then maybe um, John, uh, after Paul, if you know the status, um, whether there will be a session, um, it would be nice if we could share it. So let's go to Paul. I, it's, oh, is this an old hand? Um, I see a hand from Paul Randick. Okay, maybe that's an old hand. Uh, so let's go to, um, um, well, John, do you know if there will be an ASO AC session at the coming ICANN meeting? Yeah, there, there's an ASO AC session. There, there's always an ASO AC session. It's specific okay. to to what? Are you just wanting to know in general if there is a session? Oh uh, yes, because uh, we have actually um, uh, requested um, the ASO AC chairs if we can have a slot to present uh, to give an update about um, the status of the INS session, uh, the, the the status of the INS chairship transition from the numbers perspective. Um, and then I think the response was that there's no session um, in the coming um, ICANN meeting. So um, maybe you can actually double check. Um, and then maybe, um, Nurani, would you be able to like, um, you know, we confirm with John in CC and then if there will be a session, maybe we can try to see if um, ASOAC can accommodate like an update or um, yeah, check with Louis I can certainly. Sorry, I can certainly do that. Uh, I have been in contact with the chairs, Louis Lee and Felice Ilmas, and they were the ones who said that. I personally think it would be very good to have a session, so I can re-request, but I'm not sure if that's possible at such late uh, mm -hmm. okay. point in time. Sure. Right. Maybe the first thing, or uh, the best thing is um, maybe John, if you don't mind, to follow up with Louis, um, Felice, Ricardo, and um, if whether there will be still time slot available to give this update, whether the AC is interested to have this, and then if they feel that it might be good, then um, yeah, let's request for a, a slot. But then if not, and the agenda is already full, then we totally understand that as well. Would that um, work? Yeah, I, I, that's what I was saying. I'll, I'll check with Louie and see, and I guess uh, you want me to confirm back with Narani if there is or isn't. Um, there is definitely, as Paul's saying, there is definitely an ASOAC session. I just mm -hmm. don't know. I'll check with Louie to see what the agenda is. And if how much time would you be looking for, Zumi? Well, we're pretty flexible. So, like, maybe 10, 15 minutes would be sufficient, um, in my opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll check on that and get an answer out to, to you today, to, to Narani. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so I think, uh, and then, um, so that's for the official um, session. And um, I would also recommend uh, people to um, keep track of the CCWG accountability discussion. 
because um, if this gets delayed, um, this would uh, affect the overall um, IANA stewardship transition timelines as well. And I believe this coming um, ICANN meeting will be the key in uh, seeing the direction of the CCWG. So that's for the uh, official um, uh, session. And I'd like to um, also suggest that we also have an opportunity to meet up uh, as the CUS team members who are um, physically there. And uh, we can actually try to um, yeah, follow up and share on um, um, any of the issues that we think needs to be uh, addressed, especially uh, something that needs to be like, uh, like uh, that needs coordination or discussions with um, other community members who are there. So uh, would um, um, NRO EC Secretariat uh, be able to help in coordinating the meeting? And I believe not everybody will be um, attending there physically. So it would be nice if remote uh, participation opportunity can be provided if possible, but um, maybe it's, it's not a must. Um, I see um hand from Michael. Bill, actually, you brought up the CCWG. I just wanted to clarify, do you think that there's some possibility that I'm not seeing that the CCWG will come to full conclusion in the next 30 days? <laughs> Very good question, Bill. Um, uh, um, it's it's a very tough situation, I must say, and um, I'm not totally um, optimistic. But at the same time, well, uh, I don't know if you've seen the CCWG um, draft timeline scenario, um, and so. I think the chairs are still seeking for the possibility of publishing the um, draft proposal um, sometime in November at the earliest. But that's based on the best scenario. And um, so it, it really depends a lot on how much traction um, this way forward uh, will get within the communities in um, um, the ESOs and ACs are uh, during ICANN Dublin. Um, at this point, it's it's very tough situation, I would say. So unless you know something that no one in the Aran region knows uh, that indicates that the CCWG is uh, going to come into harmony with the CWG and the Aran or the ICANN board and so forth, then they are not on our critical path, and there's no time spent on them that advances our cause. Mm -hmm. um, well, that might be one way of thinking, and um, I don't necessarily um, disagree, but I, I think at this point we also want to um, um, Try to keep, you know, um, have to keep the best effort in uh, moving the transition um, in an integrated way as much as possible. So, in this um, context, um, the situation in the CCWG is of uh, interest. Can you explain what possibility there is of advancing in an integrated? way before November 11th? Um, well, I don't know if we want to go into the details of the possible options, but um, there are some options that, is, uh, that I observe as uh, seeing some traction. Um, but um, at the same time, I think um, the differences in opinion between the board and the members of the CCWG still needs to be um, resolved. 
Um, and this may be possible um, by people getting together face to face and uh, making coordination among the SOs and ACs and also the ICANN board. So um, I, I can see um, that you're not being optimistic, and uh, I um, I actually share this. But I'm just saying that we 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 shouldn't completely rule this rule out the CCWG's possibility to be able to maybe um, meet um, the timelines. I would say that actually I'm being extraordinarily optimistic. Up until uh, the beginning of last week, I there was no possibility of successful conclusion to this round of work, and now there is a possibility. It's a complete coincidence. It came about completely outside of anything that we were doing. And so now we have a brief window in which we could succeed. But the CCWG and the CWG uh, are not, to the best of my knowledge or anything I've heard from anyone, uh, going to do anything within that window. So either we can succeed or we can tie ourselves to them. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, 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 I see what you're saying, Bill. Um, I don't know, that might be uh, premature to, um, to conclude um, at this point before we are seeing any uh, discussions within um, that's going to happen in ICANN um, Dublin meeting. I see hand from Narani. Um, yes, thanks. Um, well, I I very much take Bill's point, and I think that you know while we need to be careful with how we proceed, we also need to be aware of uh, and maybe be clear about what our concerns are. Uh, and I think just from informal talks in the, in the, um, with members in the number community, there, there are obviously a lot of people expressing strong concern for um, what's happening in the CCWG. Uh, and while I think it's incredibly important that we remain constructive in this process, we all want a successful transition, um, not only for the numbers community, but because we're talking about a broader political context here. Um, but I think we're very well aware of the, the risks as well. Um, I think uh, it would make sense for us to make, to make a statement uh, where we express that concern. Uh, it might be good for people to know also that we do have these monthly sort of timeline coordination calls with the other community members and with, with ICANN and, um, and um, there it was very clear what any delays would mean in terms of the process from when the ICG hands in the proposal to the NTIA and the NTIA has been very clear about that. Um, so of course the last thing we want is for, for this whole process to be jeopardised because uh, of what is happening in another community. Um, personally, I think that we need to remain constructive, but we need to, of course, also um, discuss what 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 the risks are and and what other options there are. We we um, but we need to be a little bit careful with how we proceed there. I think. Um, And I, and, and I think it might be, you know, in terms of actually putting pressure on making progress, I think both the protocol uh, community or the protocol representatives and we have, uh, have done our very best to do so. But, of course, what goes on in the, in the other communities is something that we don't have control over, of course. Um, that's just a general comment. I share your concerns, Bill. Um, so, uh, and I think at this point, maybe that is what we can do, and then we can think long and hard about um, what we do if, if, um, if it doesn't go the way we want. So, um, are you suggesting that we make a statement as the Christine? 
about the concern on the timelines? Is that what you're suggesting, Nirana? I wasn't necessarily suggesting that we put together a a, uh, a, a text that we uh, submit. Um, if people feel that we should do that, then we can do that, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying that we at the ICANN meeting should be very clear about what our concerns are, if that means making comments in, in the, uh, the various working groups and the public forums, then that was sort of more what, what along the lines of what I was thinking about. Um, but I think because we all share this concern, I'd be happy to hear if, if others uh, feel differently. Uh, okay, I understood. Um, yes. We all share that concern mm -hmm. exactly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we all share the concern. Yeah. What, what concern exactly? Could someone articulate it? Oh, okay. Oh, well, uh, uh, at least the concern about um, the, the impact on timelines and um, and the transition. That's at least my um, understanding, but um, maybe Nurani wants to add more. Well, well yes, of course. But, but um, um, at this point, we have, uh, we have said that um, this is a transition that we need to do with all three communities. And, and of course, if one of the communities uh, does not manage to come to a conclusion on time, then of course that will affect all of us. Um, but if you have other concerns, Bill, then, then please articulate those. They've already not managed to come to a conclusion on time, so that's not a hypothetical. If you're asserting, it sounds like both of you are asserting that we all share some concern, but I would like to hear what concern it is specifically that you're saying that we all share, because I'm not sure that there is consensus here. Um, okay. Would you like to, what, what, what um, tell us then, Bill, since we have not um, had the chance to discuss this much uh, previously, maybe you can tell us what, what um, what you're trying to, to express and what, what kind of action you're asking for. I'm not. The two of you each said that we shared a concern, that we all shared a concern. I'm trying to get you to articulate what concern it is that you believe that we all share. I thought we already did that about the, the impact on the timelines and the um the impact of what? Well, um, delaying the transition, and um, which might uh, um, affect. Um, logical. The delay of a transition affects timelines. Mm -hmm. And then um, it might make it hard for um, the transition to actually happen. Until the beginning of last week. We had a two and a half year span of time before we have to start the process over. Now we have a window in which two of us could proceed. Are you talking about something in any way related to that? Mm, at least not me, no. I don't know about Narani. Okay, then could you clarify what you are talking about? Well, what I was um, expressing as a concern is that if the timeline of the CCWG gets delayed, then since the NTIA can um, move forward, um, when both the proposals from the CCWG and ICG are submitted to them, um, they can start the evaluation and way forward with the process uh, throughout the completion of the implementation. So if the, um, the progress within the CCWG uh, gets delayed, even if the submission to the ICG is uh, completed in the targeted uh, timelines, um, it may actually um, delay um, the, the transition in terms of completing the implementation before the contract expiry. That's the concern that I, I'm talking about. You keep saying if, yeah, all of this is in the past. They already failed. They already failed to make the deadline. 
How, how is this hypothetical? So, so, um, so are you saying that there's no point in expressing it because it's already too late? Is that what you're saying? In expressing what exactly? Sorry, can I jump in? I know that Paul has raised a hand, but just to be clear about what we're talking about. Uh, so, so basically what the, what, uh, the NTIA has expressed, and, and this is also what uh, ICANN has expressed, is basically that if we're talking about three phases, phase one being community proposal and public comment, phase two, NTIA review, evaluation and implementation planning, and, and phase three being implementation execution. Um, basically what the, the, the timeline they've expressed is that if uh, they get a delivery of the proposal uh, to the ICANN board in November, there will then be a, a phase of evaluation by the NTIA uh, that uh, then takes us to somewhere around April, May, and then an implementation phase that would take us to somewhere around August, September. And this, um, uh, this if the, the transition is still possible. If there's a slight delay to that, um, it gets very, very tight, but it might still be possible. But if there is not a delivery to the ICANN board and the NTIA until uh, begin, beginning of next year, then that basically means that um, we will not uh, be able to go through with the transition in time for the September 2016 deadline. So that is the timeline that we have um, heard expressed by, the, by ICANN and by the NTIA. So that's the timeline we're referring to. And in that sense, uh, we are not past that timeline. You can be more or less optimistic about whether or not they will meet that deadline in November. Uh, but, I, but given that that's the deadline that has been expressed, I think it is uh, premature to say uh, that the other community has failed. And I think we need to be a little bit careful in how we express any concern regarding this, uh, where they are in the process, because I think it could also be, um, it could be uh, damaging to the process if we are not constructive up until they have actually met or not met the final, final deadline. So that is the concern I'm talking about, and I think uh, in my opinion, I think it is uh, not constructive at this point to talk about a failure of any other uh, community. Okay, then uh, you are inaccurate in saying that we share the, this concern. Okay, um, now just uh, Bill. So um, and then um, I agree with uh, the point that you made, um, Nirani. And let's move to uh, Paul. And I'm also. Um, conscious um, about the time. So I see a question from um, Wendua. Is there any new deadline or timeline uh, from either ICG or NTIA? Well, it's pretty much what um, Nurani has shared. Uh, so that's the latest one that uh, we are aware. And uh, Paul, did you have your hand up to speak? Oh, it was it an old hand? Thank you. No, it, it is. It is in in connection with this, and I'm not really quite sure, Bill. I'm not really quite sure what road you're leading us down. I, I very much share uh, what Narani has has mentioned, also uh, what Izumi has has mentioned there. Um, I'm, I, you know, you're you're. I think you're, or I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're saying, oh, we've already passed that. I'm not really quite sure if we're past that, but we are very nearing a point where where there is some concern. I think that unless at the ICANN meeting itself we see something coming from CCWG or the ICANN board in this case, then we could be heading in, in, into some muddy waters. Now, you also said something that's very interesting to me because you said, okay, well, there is a window for the IETF and the RIRs to, to slip through or what have you. I'm not really quite sure if that's, if that's the case because from my understanding, and I, and I would love to I'd love for this to be the case, but I don't think a staggered approach is something that, that, is, that is seen as acceptable. I mean, we could slip through this window right now as RARs. That's very clear. I mean, we're sitting around um, talking about such minor details that we already could have went through that window, to be honest with you, my feeling. Anyway, my feeling, I can't speak for the whole crew here, but in, in, in my perception of where we are as a numbers community. 
But, um, you know, I, I share the concerns there that Narani's brought forward, and I think that I'm not really quite sure what we should be doing. I don't think there's anything we want to do to be negative in the process. We want to be as positive as we can, but I think we have been positive and accommodating through this whole process. So if you think there isn't a concern, I, I'd, I'd like to know why, it, because I'm not really quite sure a staggered approach is, is something that's just a given. So, uh, you know, I can see... You know, you're, you're, you're raising the point, or Narani's raising one point, you're kind of coming at her from another side, but I'm not actually seeing what you're giving me to, 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 to tell me that, that things are moving along fine or not. Well, Paul, there are two possibilities that I see. One possibility is that uh, we do nothing and we continue, you know, talking about whether CCWG will, you know, uh, come into harmonious agreement with CWG and with the ICANN board and so on and so forth. And uh, then come, you know, sometime in 2018, the new administration will have time to pick this up again and we can start this process over with an entirely new group of people. Uh, or we can uh, try to get numbers and one hopes protocols will uh, come along as well as they have been talking about uh, through in such a way that NTIA can pass something to Congress on November 11 or before. That's two weeks after the conclusion of the Dublin meeting. So if you're seeing some third possibility that I'm not seeing, I'd be very curious to hear it. No, that's good. I'm, I'm happy that you clarified that because that's, that's that's the feeling I have. But with those feelings, I think that the that what Durrani's brought forward is is you know it's they're valid. They're kind of valid concerns. But um, yeah, I'm I'm surprised that or or not surprised, but I I I don't know. I know that some folks on the ICG, namely Paul Wilson, has brought forward the whole idea of a staggered approach. So that has been put on the table. But I, as far as I can see, nobody has actually bothered to wipe the table with that, with that um, proposal at all and, and see what actually comes out of that. I think everybody was moving towards plan A, plan A, which is just, you know, everybody moving at one time. And, you know, you, like you said, we only have a span of probably, you know, three weeks, some three to four weeks maximum before things might look a little bit different. Um, so there is a little bit of a concern from the, from the, from the numbering side, I would say, you know, I think there is a concern in eyebrow being raised from the right community side for, for, for certain from right NCC's perspective. Hi, um, can I just uh, interrupt? So I think this discussion is uh, very useful and, uh, and we should uh, certainly continue the discussions on this, but I'm also conscious that we are already running um, 20 minutes over time. So um, at this stage, I think um, you know we, we just need to continue this dialogue, and um, so we can actually um, uh, do this um, at the ICANN meeting, um, and also um, if needed um, online as well. And then um, I I understand your um, pessimism, um, um, uh, Bill, that you know or like whether we actually feel that this can move forward. But um, at this stage, um, until um, I can... You are radically misunderstanding me. I'm not pessimistic in the least, and I am not suggesting that this can't move forward. Quite the opposite in both regards. Okay. Um, yes, and we want to be... Um, uh, um, so we... I think you were um, trying to be open to uh, several possibilities um, on the way forward, and um, so maybe I may have misunderstood that um, you are being pessimistic about a possible option for us in the way forward. Um, but what I'd like to say is that um, in terms of the situation, uh, uh, in the CCWG and uh, possibly um, in coordination with the CWG. I think um, until the end of ICAM meeting, um, we, we really want to um, to be um, constructive. Well, if we feel the concerns about the impact on timelines, it's, it's worth expressing it. Uh, but 
Um, and then also this um, possibility of this other alternative option, uh, it might be a little um, premature to make a decision uh, at this stage um, and then also at this call. So um, let's continue the discussion, uh, but I, I think the time is too short to um, reach an ag agreement or uh, a, a way forward at this call. So um, let's um, continue this discussion, um, uh, possibly when we are in ICAM meeting. Would that uh, work with um, everybody? Okay. Um, so uh, thank you, Bill, for bringing up this uh, point, and I think this is something that's uh, worth continuing the discussion. So um, yes, good discussions indeed, and uh, we did run um, over time, but um, I think the last point was actually um, worth discussing it. So thank you, everyone, for um, joining the call and also for the Aaron uh, folks for joining during the meeting. Uh, for the next meeting, I think it would be good to schedule during um, ICANN Dublin meeting. So uh, I would like to request the Secretariat um, to um, coordinate on the, confirm and coordinate on the schedule for the call. So uh, thanks very much all and um, have a nice rest of the day. Thank you, Izumi. Thanks, everyone.